Um, so I'm Gregory Jackson. I'm the chief editor of Socioeconomic Review. Uh, I've been working for SER uh, since about 2012, and in that time, the journal's really grown from, I think, being a, a smaller boutique journal to um, being a journal that's grown a lot and uh, is really part of the mainstream discussion in, in the social sciences. Uh, we're a multidisciplinary journal, so we have strong links to sociology, political science, um, economics, and many other related fields, business studies, organization studies, gender studies, and uh, many more fields. Uh, so, so that's always exciting uh, because I think SCR is a place that um, it's a place where you can have conversations across those different, different disciplines and uh, it's really about finding the big relevant topics in the world, the phenomenon that matter morally, ethically, and for the welfare of people, and then trying to understand those kind of by any means necessary, meaning using whatever disciplinary and methodological tools are available. So it, it's a ex very exciting space to be in, and uh, it's always a pleasure to, to work with authors there. And I, my name is Nina Vandel, and I have been an editor with SER for the past six years. Uh, time flies by very quickly because you get a chance to see papers in very early stages of development. And I particularly would like to say that at SER, we take a developmental approach to uh, papers. That means that uh, we pay a lot of attention to how we can take the best out of what we receive and help authors bring out the potential in, um, in their papers and to contribute to the kind of uh, science that Gregory just described so that especially young authors are very encouraged to submit their best work. I would say that given that at the uh, SASE meetings, uh, especially with such great attendance as we, as we have had at, in Lyon, uh, we encourage uh, young authors to send their best work to SER and that we will do our best, um, we on the editorial team, to uh, help them bring some of those papers to light to a very broad, international, interdisciplinary audience. Uh, and that we hope that with our help, some of these publications will help them build their reputations uh, and uh, bring them to be among the best in their disciplines. Uh, and they will keep sending their best work to SER um, so we can all benefit from it. So uh, I'm uh, working on a number of projects related to corporate governance and corporate responsibility and irresponsibility uh, in a kind of comparative uh, historical perspective. Um, so I'm very much interested in the consequences of corporate organization for uh, inequality, uh, employee welfare, and um, things like uh, ethical behavior in relation to social issues. So um, working on a s small book project which will kind of combine these uh, different different strands of work and trying to do that in a cross-national comparative perspective. I am um, very happy that a book that I worked on recently came out called Money Talks together with Viviana Zelizer and Fred Weary and very happy that several people who contributed to that volume are SASE uh, members and our colleagues. The book uh, tries to explain how money really works, that's the subtitle, and takes a sociological approach to, to money and how relationships matter and how social forces and institutions shape what happens with money. I also have a very broad interest, long-standing interest in globalization and post-socialist transformations. I presented some of that work that I continue with students at a SASE conference, so that feedback was very helpful in developing that project. Uh, primarily in uh, trying to understand how globalization and post-socialist transformations interact and uh, how they have influenced each other. And I have a very different project uh, that I will start. I just received NSF, uh, National Science Foundation funding for that, which is about the moral and political economy of parenting. That is to try to understand the link between rising debt and raising kids. I was very excited to see this year the early career workshop participants, 20 of them, and I was reminded that 
many years ago, and I won't tell you how many, I received one of those early, uh, certificates in a slightly different form as a graduate student at Princeton, and that was probably um, a, a very important experience that created a link for me to the uh, SASE organization, to the community, and I keep coming back because I love the people who come to SASE. Um, I see friends and I also am very stimulated by the discussions that we have. Uh, these are my people, I would say, and the community I look forward to meeting every year on an annual basis. Yes, so SASE has a very unique character as an organization because looking back in its history, it's something of like a social movement within social sciences. It, and it has some aspects today, of course, it's a professional organization, but because it's, um, its membership and nature caught really across disciplines and it's really about people who share, I think, um, some common academic perspectives, but more importantly, I think some um, normative commitment to think that through social science we can you know, identify problems, um, support positive social change, and th there's no particular ideology attached to that, but in American politics, in the history of American politics, you might call that a kind of progressive worldview, so uh, a, a belief in, um, yeah, by tackling important problems of the day, and I, I think that's what brings people together and allows them to interact, I think, in a, a kind of, um, you know, n not so hierarchical setting where you have a lot of young scholars and senior scholars who really uh, discuss in a, an eye-to-eye -eye way without um, yeah, so, some of the um, I don't know, kind of tra traditional academic um, hierarchies and, and rituals attached to that. So, so that, that makes it, I think, also very dynamic because you have new people coming in, new topics, and as the world changes, our, our organization changes, and uh, it's a place where I think um, that change is, is very rapid and responsive, so that makes it exciting for me. Next year is particularly exciting because we'll be in Japan, and Japan is a really uh, interesting and recently forgotten place within the social sciences because Japan, uh, in, way, in many ways, in terms of demography, uh, in terms of technology, it's very far, if you like to say, ahead of some a Western and North American society. So I think by studying Japan, you know, we can see a little bit into some of the m kind of mega trends in society and economy that are, you know, maybe not quite yet in Europe. And uh, so I think it's a really good opportunity uh, for to reintroduce people to Japan, which is really an important case in comparative social science, but has recently um, received less attention. So I really encourage people to to uh, take that take advantage of that to as a as a new. Uh, way of engaging in the world around us. Absolutely, everyone should come to Kyoto. So see you next year.